Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to Author Story. I'm Alexander Lim, your host. And for this episode, I'm interviewing Carlene Montes de Oca, author of the book Dog is My Doctor, Cat is My Nurse, An Animal Lover's Guide to a Healthy, Happy, and Extraordinary Life. And for those of you following along who are interested, you can go over now to the Amazon link in the description below the video and check out or get a copy of her book. So, Carlene, welcome to Author Story. Thanks for being our guest. It's my pleasure, Alex. Cool. So, uh, Carlene, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your author story? Well, my author story is that I wanted to be an author probably from the day I was born. Oh. And probably <laughs> and probably from the day I was born, I also loved animals. Mm. Uh, so, so I think those two were destined to uh, collide at some point. And uh, the thing was, I wasn't sure what my story was. So I, I had a few incarnations in my lifetime. I... Uh, first fell in love with film. Okay. I fell in love with Star Wars. And when I when I first saw that movie, I thought, oh, my God, I want to do that. So I was fortunate that I did do that. And I went off to work as a film editor for a while. Mm -hmm. But I still had this, you know, calling inside of me to do something more, something more that was that I felt would be more meaningful. Right. And this is when I decided to get into Chinese medicine and acupuncture and plant based nutrition. And as I started to do that, uh, I started to hear people's stories about how their animals really, I mean, I could, it was amazing. You would, you would talk to somebody who was feeling really sick and they might feel depressed or anxious and suddenly their face would just beam when they start to talk about their animals. And I started to see, you know what, there's a connection here between health and how, how the relationships with animals. And I personally had had that experience because I went through a divorce and it was really painful and I was depressed and anxious and gained a lot of weight and all the things that one would expect when you're not feeling so hot. And I had some, I had cats around me and I had dogs around me and they really helped me out during that time. Cool. Fantastic. All right. So uh, about the book, um, would you mind telling us for the benefit of those of us who haven't read it, would you mind telling us a little bit more about it and what it's all about? Sure. It's pretty much what the subtitle says. It's an animal lover's guide to living healthier, happier, and more extraordinary. And as a holistic healthcare practitioner, you know, somebody who's not just focused on the physical body, but on the whole component, mind, body, and spirit too, mm -hmm. that's what this book is about. You know, we, ha we have a lot of um, physical science saying now that animals are beneficial to you know, decreasing our blood pressure for heart health, for helping us with, um, you know, healthy lifestyle habits that can, that will help with if you have diabetes or another chronic illness. But I see that they help us with the whole gamut of health, mm. mind, body, spirit, you know, and this is the healthy, happy and extraordinary part. They help us also emotionally, like I described with my divorce. And a lot of people have also contributed stories in the book that show how their cats, their dogs, have actually helped them as well through whatever is going on. Uh, one story I have is about a couple and the husband has Parkinson's disease and how his cats are helping him through that. So there's a lot of, and I've, ex I've interviewed a lot of experts, you know, who talk about how, you know, it, they've helped them or they have some evidence to support this as well. Right. And what's kind of cool about Dog is My Doctor is it's two books in one. Okay. And because uh, there is a whole online photo gallery mm -hmm. that you can access as well to see all the pictures of all the people I'm talking about and their animal friends. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a cool thing. Okay. So if I may ask, uh, what is the uh, site for this online photo gallery? You, when you buy the book, mm -hmm. you will see the link inside the book in several places. Right. Just to keep reminding you, you know, go to the gallery. You can go chapter by chapter. <laughs> right, right. Cool. I got that. Okay, so about the book, was, was there like an aha, aha moment where you thought, you know, I really should write this? Or was this like an evolution? Like over time you thought, maybe I'll write this, maybe I won't. Finally got around to doing it. Sure. I would say that it was an evolution for sure. Okay. You know, isn't it funny how all steps lead to something else later? Um, so that's kind of how I felt. But probably where I remember having the major aha moment was when I came up with the title for the book and my dogs inspired it and so did my cats. Okay. I was walking I was walking my dogs one day and I literally remember turning the corner and this thought came into my head, dog is my doctor. Mm -hmm. And I went like, wow, that's kind of a cool title for a book. Okay. That's kind of cool. And then I got home 
And I was kind of tired because I'd been hiking for a while. And I just laid down to take a short nap. And my cat jumped on my back. Okay. And he just lay, laid on my spine. And I, you know how that feels? It feels so good. Yeah, yeah. And su- suddenly I went, cat is my nurse. Dog is my doctor. Cat is my nurse. And there you go. That's That was the aha. Okay. All right. And of course, the book came came out from there, from that point onwards. Yeah. Yeah. I had been like, you know, I'd been compiling certain information in my head, but I didn't know how to write a book. Okay. I didn't know how to put it together. So right. that was the major moment, I would say. All right. Cool. So if I may ask, uh, so if I may ask Carlene, how many pets do you presently have? Right now, I have two dogs. I have Dakota, who is almost 16. Wow. And I have, yeah, and I have Rudy, who is 13. And in the book, though, I do um, talk about my six pack, which were my six animal companions, four dogs and two cats that I rescued, which really inspired the book for me. Unfortunately, who knew that I was going to be taking five years to write a book? And they started to pass away over time, which is really sad. Oh. But I, I do talk about that a little bit in the book as well. Yeah. So do you have any plans in uh, increasing your pack? Uh, well, you know what? This house will never be empty of animals, I can assure you. <laughs> All right. But for now, I want to let these guys, they're older now, and, you know, they need they need more special care because they're older, you know. they. Sure. And so I want to just keep the household as calm as possible for now. Yeah. All right. Got that. Well, definitely. I mean, they're, they're definitely uh, pretty senior dogs. <laughs> they are. Though we go hiking every day. They're really active and they're doing very well, but... You know, just and they're having a great life. You know, they're healthy, and that's what's that I'm really happy for. Yeah, that's that's what's important. That's definitely what's important. So, did you start off as a dog lover and switch to cats, or did you like cats and dogs both equally at the same time? When I was a kid, we had a lot of dogs. I mean, we had a lot of dogs, and that was a really great thing because uh, I grew up feeling I was the youngest of uh, four, and my next sibling was nine years older than I was, so. It was a, a significant age difference. So at a certain point, I sort of felt like an only child because they, you know, they were out of the house and doing their thing. Right. And the dogs to me were my friends. You know, I, my parents were a little were a little overprotective, so I didn't get to go out much. And so the dogs were it for me. And I didn't understand cats too much. Like I wasn't, I never had one. I remember feeding, trying to give some a cat milk and feeding them and trying to help them. You know, when they'd come by, but. It was when I got older that I couldn't have dogs in an apartment that I got two cats and they really kind of balanced that out for me. And, and they also just really led me to, to realize, you know, it's all animals, all, all right. animals have the capacity to love us. And so, there, you know, there's there's uh, people have pot bellied pigs. They have, you know, horses. There's yeah. a lot of animals that can serve as co- companions. Right. OK, cool. So, um. Just curious, would you have any idea on the numbers and how many dogs and cats there are in, in the United States that are, you know, kept as pets or companions? Sure, I do. Uh, you want to take a guess? Oh, millions. I know it's I yeah. know somewhere in the millions, but that's about it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we calculated with dogs and cats, it's about 150 million. Wow. Two, so two humans for every uh, fur baby. There you go. And so isn't that a isn't that a pretty amazing thing? And and I know that um, I think cats are outnumbering dogs these days. Yeah, I, I, I read I read that somewhere. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. What is it? What is it in your opinion that makes cats more popular as pets compared to dogs? Well, I don't you know, it's an interesting question. I don't know that they're more popular per se. I think that they're more um, there's two things. One, I would say is a lot of us have to live in places where they don't accept dogs, Mm -hmm. you know, dogs need a little more space. We usually have apartments or maybe we live with roommates or so, so maybe those confines, those situations, you know, have people steer towards cats. Mm -hmm. I also think with cats, I mean, I, it's funny. um, Dogs seem to need a lot more to me companionship. Like they really want to be with you. You need to take them for a walk. Yeah. Usually people don't take their cats for a walk, so they might be a little bit easier in some ways to take care of. Yeah. So th- those might be two things that contribute to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Got it. And and that definitely makes sense because dogs are descended from uh, pack animals, you know, wolves. So they really need. They really, I guess, hardwired, biologically hardwired to seek out companions yeah they are definitely a pack animal i mean i would never 
not sleep with my animals in my bedroom because that's just, that's upsetting to them. You know, they want to be with you. They don't have to be on the bed, but they can, you know, they're, it's funny at one point when I had six, I had two cats on the bed and four dogs around the bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, cats definitely, I mean, cats definitely they're, I'm, I'm, you know, as a, as a new, newly, I don't know how you call it, a newly uh, converted uh, cat, uh, cat lover. Right. I'm, yes. I, I'm surprised at how social they are. I mean, I thought, I always thought cats to be aloof and, you know, and uh, they like stroke, being stroked and being hugged and all that stuff. I'm really surprised. Yeah. And it's it, it, with every stroke and every hug. And of course, with cats, you know, the thing is, it's important to, to, to see, do they want to be stroked? Do they want to be petted? But when you can really get into that, yeah. it's so beneficial for your well-being. It, it's amazing all the things that are going on inside of your body when you engage in that way. Mm, okay, yeah, definitely. So about that, um, do dogs, do, do we human beings react the same way to dogs as with cats? I mean, does it matter if we pet or stroke a cat compared to say if we pet or stroke a dog where our, you know, where our bodies are concerned? I think it, I think the ultimate thing that matters is your relationship to that animal. So if you have one of the things in the Smithsonian, I remember reading recently, there was a magazine article that said they were they were scientifically studying how people react the, the how people react when they see an, an animal, a dog mm -hmm. or or whatever animal it is. And, yeah, there was beneficial things that were going on inside of the body. Mm -hmm. But when it was their dog. Mm -hmm. When it was, when that dog, you know, they were the guardian of that animal and they had a stronger relationship, yep. then, then it was really maximized. So I think it depends on what your relationship is. So that's why I always tell people, you know, to get the maximum benefit, nourish your, nourish, nourish your ships. It's like your relationships, your right. friendships, your guardianship. And that's what will make the difference. Right. Okay. So I guess it don't matter. I mean, it, it could be like, as you mentioned, it could be like a pot belly pig, could be a horse. So long as your relationship with that animal is strong, you get some is strong. Yes. And just think about it. If, you know, if you were afraid of an animal, let's say, you know, maybe then you'd have more cortisol going through your system, which is more stress. And, but undoubtedly a lot of people I know feel stressed and then they start petting an animal and they see how loving they are, then it sort of melts away. Hmm, okay, cool. So about about that, Carleen, um, wh what is the uh, what happens within our bodies when we relate to an animal that way, an, an animal that we have a relationship with in that way? What are the benefits to us? So when we start relating to an animal that way, like for example, in the morning, I always make sure that I get up and I engage with my animal. So I'm sitting there stroking them and petting them. And so what's going on outside of my body? I'm smiling. I'm laughing. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling happy. I'm, so all of these things are what's going on inside of me as a result of that is I'm getting a boost to my immune system. Mm -hmm. I am, my blood pressure is kind of at a, you know, it's probably going to be very even and feeling really good. Mm -hmm. I am going to be, there's just a lot of beneficial, like I'll probably, I'm breathing, I'm laughing, I'm breathing. So I'm bringing in oxygen into my body. Right. I'm setting off all sorts of positive beneficial hormones in my body. Mm -hmm. You know, to counteract any, you know, sometimes we wake up and we're feeling really grumpy and we're feeling, you know, not in the hottest mood, but suddenly right. I'm like ready to go. So I don't need a cup of coffee. I've got dogs. Mm, okay. <laughs> <Love that>. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. St sorry about that. Uh, okay. So I, and of course, as you mentioned, if the relationship is strong, the same thing happens with cats. Absolutely. 100%. I remember when my cats are still here. They were the ones who would wake me up. I, I didn't need an alarm clock. They would just lay on my chest and then I'd wake up to that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, in my case, uh, my cats wake me up when they're yowling because they want to get fed. Uh. <laughs> so <laughs> something to get used to. Cool. It is. Cool. Yeah. But it's not, it's not a bad reminder to get up early and go to bed early. Yeah. True. True. So I'm just curious, Carleen, do you have any um, notes over here, like any references on any scientific studies that show these, uh, these benefits to our bodies? Well, when you, it's really funny. I was talking to somebody about that and they said, how much of that do you have? And I looked at the back of my book. I go, I have 103 references. All right. <laughs> no yes. Right there. No shortage of that. And as I said, I interviewed a lot of people for this book and they, they, from, 
a wide range of life. I interviewed a guy who was homeless who walked across the country with his dog after the death of his wife. Right. And he felt that his dog really helped him stay alive to author to New York Times bestselling author Jack Hanfield. So besides the scientific evidence behind it, there's a lot of personal stories too. Mm, nice. Okay. So uh, before the personal stories, I just like to ask, what in your opinion is it about about uh, the animals themselves that enables us to get these kind of benefits from them? Is it because of the way they react to us? Is it something that's inherent to them, like their nature or something like that? I wonder, I think, I think it's, they are, I think the best manifestation of unconditional love I have ever seen. Mm. If you, uh, if you go up to an animal and especially an animal that you have a relationship with them, they don't judge you. Mm -hmm. They, they are not, they love you mm -hmm. no matter what you may make a mistake that day or you, you know, you may, uh, not walk them that day. You may do something that, that you know is like not so hot. They forgive you. Mm. They forgive you. They are so happy to see you when you get home. Uh, you know, that who do you get that from anywhere from anywhere else? Where do you get that kind of love and that acceptance, that non-judgment? Those are very powerful things. And they, their love is very pure. It is there and it's pure. And, and that's something that's hard to find. Yeah, good point. Good point. Definitely. I mean, Good luck trying to find that from a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think our love is very conditional. And un until you really experience that connection with an animal, uh, I mean, it's it, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah, true, definitely. All right, so you, you there are a lot of stories in this book. Um, do you have any particular favorite story uh, that you, you know, that really leaped out and grabbed at you while you're making this? There are so many. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story, about the homeless guy who walked across the country, because I just I found that to be so intriguing. Yeah. But he, he was um, he he was married, very in love with his wife. She came down with cancer. And the way he describes the story was that she was at home and the dog was always laying next to her. And the dog started really reacting, barking, barking, barking. And he went upstairs and she had passed. And so he had lost all of his money really paying for her met for her uh, care because the insurance didn't kind of come through. Right. So he just he she had always wanted to go to California. So he decided to walk there. Mm -hmm. And but before he decided that he actually he actually thought to himself, I, I don't think I can live anymore. I think I'm going to, you know, probably kill myself because this is, you know, I can't live without her. But he had a dream that night about his dog. And the dog was just standing outside the door waiting for him. Hmm. And he realized, if I do this to myself, she will be waiting for me my whole life, or for, waiting for her her whole life. Right. And he said, I can't do that to her. She's my best friend. And so he woke up and instead walked across the country. Right. And he just t talked about his experiences walking across the country until he reached California. And he was a different person at that point. And so I just thought that is an amazing, powerful story of companionship, of friendship, about the healing power of an animal in an unexpected way. Wow. And, and he, he took his dog with him, right? I mean, the dog walked with he, him. Yeah. And in fact, he described stories of reaching areas where there was so much snow right. that he would carry the dog. He'd put him sort of in his backpack and he would carry him and he'd be carrying water and all sorts of things. And so it was, um, but he said he learned so much, you know, about simplicity and about not needing things. Mm -hmm. You know, he said he used to have lots of things and now all he wants is his dog. Wow. Nice. And if I may ask, how big was this dog? He was about, uh, like about knee high. Oh, okay. So I, I'm, cause I, you mentioned him, uh, putting the dog in his backpack. So I was under the impression this might've been a <laughs> I think he must have stuffed him in his backpack or, you know, he's, yeah, she's about, Poppy's about knee high, maybe a, a tad smaller, but about that big. Okay. Okay. So, all right. That's, uh, that's very, that's, I must say, that's a very touching story right there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose there are a lot more stories. Well, maybe not exactly there are. But similar to that in the, in there the are. It's such a wide range of stories, and it's interesting because when people find out that I've written this book and I tell them what it's about, they usually start telling me right away what their story is. Right. And the, and I can't tell you how many people, when they finish, they look at me and they say, 
you must think I'm crazy. And I'm like, uh, no, I wrote this book. I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> right. How about a cat story? Was there any particular cat story that struck you? Yeah. Let me share with you this cat story, which is uh, particularly one that really touches my heart. This is a story about uh, Michelle and Mike and their cats, Abby and Allie. And Mike, well, actually the couple, Michelle and Mike, they used to love to walk together all the time. They would walk, walk, and then he got Parkinson's disease. Hmm. Par Parkinson's disease basically limits your mobility and you start kind of stiffening up. And so you, it's a degenerative disease, unfortunately. So uh, she, they could no longer walk together, and Michelle was very sad about that. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they had rescued a couple of cats, Abby and Allie, who Mike had fallen in love with, just loved these cats. And one day, she was thinking about how sad she was that she couldn't walk with Mike, and all of a sudden, she heard this chirping behind her. And she turned around, and her cat, Abby, had gotten out and was following her. Mm -hmm. And she got concerned, like, oh, my gosh, you know, I don't want her to get hit by, hit by a car. I don't want her to chase animals. Right. But she said... Abby stayed next to her the entire walk. Mm -hmm. And she thought that was really peculiar. So then the next day she was walking and the same thing happened. Mm -hmm. And the day after and the day after. And she said, it was amazing that she will go with her on these walks every day when now that Mike cannot. And she said it, what it's helped her do is neighbors come up, of course, and want to talk to her. And she says it's important that people don't just see them as, you know, there's Mike with the walker, that he has Parkinson's but as a cool couple, you know, with these great cats. Right. And she says that when the days that she doesn't want to go because she's just feeling emotionally like she can't do it, yeah. the cat will start hitting her leg okay. and going, come on, go. Or she'll just jump on a counter and start swiping things off the counter Okay. to make, to make Michelle go on those walks. And uh, she just said it's incredible because they also help Mike because he needs sometimes that comfort of that warmth. And so they'll jump on him and do that. But they also seem to know when he doesn't want that and wants to not be touched yeah. or when he needs a good laugh and they start jumping around and kind of like making him laugh, you know, with their antics. So there's a lot of well-being in that little story there. Wow. All right. That's fantastic. And of course, these cats are these cats are well bonded to them then. They are definitely. All right. Cool. OK, so Carlene, let's say you met up with a person who's looking for a pet, most likely a cat, most likely a dog. This person has not had a pet before, you know, so he's not sure how to handle or, or how to handle one or manage one. And you had only enough time to tell him one thing about how to do so. Uh, what would be that one thing you would tell that person? Why? I would tell them to, to go to their a local shelter or rescue. Okay. And I would ask them to talk, to tell the people there his their story and their concerns, and be very honest about it. Mm -hmm. And third, I would just say go with your gut, go with your instinct, because often an animal will choose you. Mm. All right. Good point. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So cool. So, um, uh, are there any? So you know, we're winding this down. So, Carlene, are there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share to inspire listeners? Maybe give them a little bit more knowledge about cats and dogs and how close they can be with us. Yes, I think basically all of us um, in the future we're seeing chronic illness as a huge problem. Huge problem. You know, one in four of us will probably die of heart disease. Unfortunately, those are the statistics at this point. That's a pre totally preventable lifestyle um, disease, and for the most part, and animals can be such a great benefit to us to enhance our well-being and our lifestyle habits. So I just want to say, if you're on the fence, think of that. Think of the health issues that they can provide for you, mm -hmm. and also think beyond our cat and dog friends. Think that you know, animals, all animals really help can help us. Whether it be a pig, a goat. Uh, you know, a uh, horse, whoever you make that bond with. Um, and animals need our help now as much as we need their help. So I would really encourage to adopt and go out and make a friend. All right, cool, fantastic. Okay, thanks for those words. So in, cl yeah. you're in, cl so in closing then, the book is Dog, Dog is My Doctor, Cat is My Nurse, An Animal Lover's Guide to a Healthy, Happy, and Extraordinary Life. The authors are guest, Carlene Montes de Oca, and you can find her book at your favorite bookseller, as well as on Amazon. So, Carlene, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being an author's story. It was great having you with us today. 
I loved being here. Thank you so much. Cool. So if any of you listeners want to know more about this very important topic, well, particularly where health is concerned, please feel free to go ahead and check out Dog is My Doctor, Cat is My Nurse, which you can do so right now by going to the Amazon link in the description below the video. And if you'd like to follow our author interviews on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. So bye for now, everyone. I'll back an author story next time with another inspiring author.